All right, wait a sec, this isn't my coffee. Nope, this is the router we're gonna talk about today. This thing is super tiny with two and a half gig ethernet. Wait a sec, let's back up for a sec. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is one that I've been so excited to show you. I first heard about this, I guess, months ago. We got one, we've been testing it for a while, and this thing is absolutely cool, although there's definitely a catch to it. This little tiny box here is called the iCool Core R1. And inside, we get a quad core processor, we get a removable and upgradable NVMe SSD, and we also get four network ports, which you can see here. These four network ports are not just the run of the mill one gigabit ports. Oh no, this is a quad two and a half gig ethernet router. And just to give you some sense of how small this thing is, I put it next to some of the other quad two and a half and six two and a half gig ethernet quad core Intel nodes that we reviewed and you know have talked about before. You can see those videos, also the Mac mini. Now just for another sense of size comparison, this is the R86S that we reviewed previously. You can find a video on that, super awesome. But uh, I do wanna show you just the size. I mean, this thing absolutely is way smaller than the GoWin R86S. And comparing it to something like a one liter PC, I mean, this is way smaller than our Project Tiny Mini Micro PCs. And just measurement wise, this is a seven and a half by seven and a half centimeter square. And then the height of it is 4.8 centimeters or uh, just under 1.9 inches. Game plan for today, we are gonna check out the hardware. We're gonna get inside, see what makes this thing work. Then we're gonna talk about performance, power consumption, noise. We're also gonna do OS testing because I know a lot of people are gonna wanna know, you know, what can you actually run on this thing and what doesn't run on this thing. And then I wanna get to my key lessons learned. And I just wanna say thank you to our STH YouTube members for helping sponsor this video. We were able to go buy an SSD that we could go and swap into this just to go try that out because of your support. So thank you. And if you want to join, you can always click that link down below. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this unit. Both of these ports are USB 3.2 Gen 1, so they're five gigabit per second ports, but at least you get two of them on the front of the system. On the one side, you get a label. On the other side, you get the other USB port, which is a type C port. And then you get a TF, which is basically like a micro SD card slot right here. And I just wanna point out that that means we have a total of three USB ports. And one of my big things that I really wanted to see on the GoWin R86S was a third USB port. So this kind of answers that need. But let's get to the super exciting side. On the main faceplate, what you'll see is that we have four RJ45 ports. These are all two and a half gig ethernet ports. Inside the system is the Intel i226V, which is the newest rev. Now the i226V is the newest version that has some new bug fixes and stuff like that. But on the other hand, I think some folks are seeing some issues. If you have like a consumer motherboard and Windows and some folks in Linux, we haven't really seen it running Linux on these, but uh, maybe that's just this platform. I don't, I don't exactly know why, but we've been running this thing just like 24 seven, just to see if we could make these things drop. Other features though, is that you'll see that we have an HDMI port. This can support up to a 4K 60 display. And then there's also a PD, USB Type-C, which is for power delivery because this has two options for power delivery. You can either use the USB Type-C or you can also use the included adapter, which allows you to use a DC barrel jack and then use that for power. And if you're wondering how you mount it, well, you can stick it on a desk, which is pretty easy. You can Velcro it just about anywhere. And if you really want to, there's also an included Visa mounting bracket, which is, uh, which is this thing right here. And that bracket goes to the underside of the system. Here, you can see that we have a cutout for a vent for a fan. I do kind of wish that we had a little bit more just kind of airflow there, but there are vents on either side of this thing. And you can see that there is a copper cooling block on the bottom, which is uh, it's just kind of cool in a system like this. Usually you get like the least expensive thing, which would be like aluminum or something like that. And so seeing something as copper was actually like, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. If anyone is wondering if this is a family system, well, this grate should definitely answer that for you. If you do want to hear the system and learn more about the power consumption and noise, we have a section on that. You can find that just in the chapter markers below. But yeah, you probably want to know a lot more than hear the ports. So let's go see how this thing works by looking inside. So the first thing you can do is you can open and actually service one part of the system. Everything else is pretty much not really serviceable, but one part is, and that is if you open the top, you just pop it out like this, and then inside you have a NVMe SSD. I was pretty excited to find that this is a half terabyte Western digital drive. That's actually a pretty darn decent drive, especially for like a firewall or something like that. That is more capacity than you need. 
Okay, so opening up the system, you can see that this is a two PCB, just kind of level design, right? The first thing that you'll see is that you have a top PCB and a bottom PCB. And then there's kind of just little supports that put those things together. And then you'll see on the side that there are two ribbon cables that really provide the connectivity between the two boards, right? The top board serves as the top three LAN ports, but it has some extra features as well. It also has the USB type C and the TF or the SD micro SD card reader. And then the other thing it has is it has that spot, that M.2 slot for the NVMe SSD. On the PCB itself, these aren't just the ports, they also have the controllers. So for example, we can see three of the Intel i226 NICs on this board. The next level of the PCB though is definitely the most interesting. So this level has one i226 NIC, and then there are a couple other things that are on here that I think uh, you know folks are gonna really like, right? So the first thing is that there is the HDMI port and there's also the USB power input there, but, uh, but the vast majority of this bottom part is really dedicated to things like the memory and also the Intel processor. So the memory on these is soldered. So you can't upgrade the memory, which is, you know, frankly, a little bit of a bummer. I know a lot of folks would rather have SODIMS, but when you see how much space is taken up by the memory, um, I think it makes a lot of sense. So the memory options in this are that you can either get the eight gig or the 16 gig option. Of course we have the 16 gig option because we have like the fanciest configuration you can get. But this memory is dual channel LPDDR4 memory. So that is kind of nice that you do get a little bit more performance than if you did have SODIMS. Now the memory again is not SODIMS memory, it's LPDDR memory. And so that's soldered instead of being replaceable. And that's just what it is. So the, the idea is that you're only really servicing the M.2 SSD, you're not really servicing anything else in this. The the processor that's in our unit is the Intel Pentium Silver N6005. Now this is one that we've seen in a number of the fanless firewalls. And in the fanless units, it's probably not my favorite because um, I feel like you spend a lot more money for it. And also just, you know, for being honest, like sometimes the really small, like these are actually some of the better chassis, but some of the smaller chassis don't have enough cooling for that. And that is where the active cooler for this comes in. Now I do wanna talk really quickly about some of the options that you can get in this, right? So the first option is that instead of 16 gigs like we have, you could get only eight gigabytes of memory. And then the other option is that instead of the N6005, you can get a, uh, I think a Celeron uh, N5105. Both of these are quad core units. They're the same Atom generation. And so just, you know, th there's a difference in, in them in terms of clock speed, but it's not necessarily like the biggest difference. They're still the same core count, same architecture. And then the third option is just the amount of SSD space. You could have just a diskless one. You could have a 128 gig. And I think they also offer a 512, which that's what this is. Okay, so that was super cool, but let's talk about the performance of this real quick. Okay, so how fast is one of these things? And we always get asked like, you know, it's a quad core Intel processor. It must be like a, you know, something that would be in a desktop or something like that, right? And it really is not. Um, you know, this is frankly a big upgrade over like the previous generation, J4125s, but it's not necessarily something like an Intel core. This is still like the older Atom core. So it's not, it's not like these super fast cores that you see. One cool thing though, is that unlike the Atoms, like the Intel Atom C3000, or now that we're looking at the C5000 series, this does have, a integrated GPU. So you do have an iGPU in here if you are using that for any like, I don't know, like transcoding or something like that. So this little box does have quick sync video support. So to quick benchmarks, the CPU performs just about as it does on some of the better fanless units. It may actually hold clocks a little bit better, but it's, it seems like it's pretty much on par. And it's just kind of what we would expect on a system like this. In terms of networking performance, that does mean that we have enough CPU to fully utilize the two and a half gig ports. And we actually just set up things in OPN Sense where we pass traffic between the two ports and it was fine. So I would say that, um, you know, you can get a decent amount of traffic going through this thing and it, it works. We're gonna talk more about the OSs, but you can definitely use this as a firewall or even just like a little lightweight virtualization host. But that's, I think, why we need to talk about the power and noise of the system. Okay, nobody likes a loud system or one that uses too much power. So let's take a look at the power consumption and noise of the R1. So first off, how do you even power this thing? Well, our unit came with a iCool core power adapter. It's a 30 watt power adapter, but it's a little different from some of the other inexpensive systems that we've seen and we've purchased before uh, because, well, this, this actually has a uh, USB type C 
power end. And that plugs in right here to the USB power delivery. So we're gonna plug that in real quick and we're gonna let this start to boot. And since I figured I should just show you this, if you wanna turn it on, you can either set the setting in BIOS. I wish that was default, but it seems like it's not the default for some reason on these. Uh, but what you can do is you just hit the little power button and it turns on. And then always remember to go into the BIOS and turn that to always on on AC power, especially if you're gonna make a router out of this. Now, you might be able to hear this now, at startup, it's gonna be a little bit loud. I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna put this thing down. I just wanna show you one other thing real quick is that we got in the box this, which this is the um, USB type C on one end and it has a DC barrel jack on the other end. So it's an alternative way that you can power this thing. Okay, so this thing is now booted. It's in Proxmox. I have my laptop over here. And so let me just kind of show you this, uh, just the noise of this thing and the power consumption at idle. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that our power consumption is sitting at about the 12.4, 12.5 watt range over here on the power meter. And we do have one NIC that is plugged in so that way we can actually access it since it doesn't have Wi-Fi. And so what I wanna do real quick is just let you hear what this thing sounds like. It's it's definitely um, definitely not silent. If it's you know sitting here on the desk in front of me, I can, I can definitely hear it. And so this is about six inches away. And then in terms of noise, um, you know, we have a little decibel meter over here. This decibel meter in the studio will read about 34 dBA if, you know, just because of all the lights and all that kind of stuff. So there is some noise floor here, but with this unit, you know, about a foot and a half away, which is if it was sitting next to you, it'd be about how you'd hear it or like, you know, how far away it would be. What we're getting on here is somewhere in that like 39 to 40 ish, DBA range. Okay, at this point, the stress test has been running for about a minute or so, so it's definitely heated up a little bit. And uh, what you're gonna see just in terms of overall power consumption over here, you'll see that we're about you know 20 to 21 watts. Um, we did see a peak earlier in the system, I think of like 22 or so. And in terms of noise, we're still in that like 39, 40, 41 watt like DBA range. So we really haven't heard any more noise. Um, I, I do kind of wish though that the fan spun down a bit because it feels like it's just a little too loud at idle if running a stress test at 100% CPU utilization is giving you the same like just kind of decibel rating as if you're running it uh, idle, right? And I'll just let you have a quick listen to this so you can hear uh, what, what it sounds like. I'll just tell you from sitting here, it sounds about the same at idle and under load. I will say though that we tortured this thing and we ran this thing under load for like 12 hours, just like nonstop. And it definitely got pretty warm, but it didn't like overheat and break. And you're never really gonna run these things or most people are not gonna run these things anywhere near 100% CPU utilization anyway. So I don't think it's too bad. Okay, so let's talk just a little bit about the OS support for this. So this thing we've managed to run uh, Ubuntu, so uh, 22.04, we ran that on this, no problem. We also ran Proxmox VE 7.3, it ran. We put VMware ESXi 8 on this and it ran. We also put um, OPN Sense and it ran out of the box. Windows will require a NIC driver. So you're gonna have to go download that. And then, uh, you know, when it says it can't find a NIC, you're gonna have to like go and, and put that in. I don't think many people are gonna put Windows on it, but I guess, you know, there are people that will put Windows on anything. And so it's an x86 processor at the end of the day. There are a lot of people that are also gonna want to do PFSense. The challenge with this and PFSense is that the NICs in the current PFSense 2.6 are not supported because the Intel i226 is not supported in PFSense. There are development releases that you can use or you can go to PFSense Plus. I wish that this supported PFSense, but on the flip side, I also kind of wish that PFSense just came out with their new version with the i226 support, so that way PFSense would support this box. So overall, that is a great roster of OSs that this thing supports just out of the box. I mean, you do have to have drivers, which is pretty easy if you wanna go run some OSs, and you may have to use different versions or newer versions because these are the newer NICs. But at the same time, this is an Intel x86 processor, so almost anything runs on it. That's a big difference compared to a lot of the like ARM-based SBCs, where sometimes you, know, you might be able to get Linux, but other things you're not gonna be able to get working, and this is a big difference on a, a little platform like this. Okay, so let's talk about key lessons learned. And uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is just the pricing. The pricing on this unit, if you get the kind of N5105, so the just lower clock CPU, and you also wanna only get eight gigs of memory, and you don't want an SSD, maybe you have one that's an M.2 2242 SSD just kind of sitting around. And uh, you know, if you wanna do that, this thing retails, I think for like $199. Now we have like the highest end configuration with the Intel Pentium Silver N6005, the half terabyte SSD and 16 gig 
gigabytes of memory. So that is actually $359, which is quite a bit more. And at that price, you really are starting to compete with the fanless models that we've reviewed previously. Now, personally, I actually like the N5105 a little bit better than the N6005, just because I think that that saves you a lot of money. On this system, it's like a $30 upgrade. And if you're not really overly worried about the CPU performance, um, you know, frankly, that's the one I would probably get. But I guess that brings me to my second key lesson learned, which is like, like who the heck would buy one of these things? Look, here's the deal. If you're gonna run this as a router that you're gonna have running in the same spot and you're gonna like tuck it away and you never wanna see it again, I don't know if I would get this. To me, as cool as this is, I probably would look at a you know fanless unit for something like that. Also, if you don't want four two and a half gig ports and maybe you want 10 gig, well then I would look at the R86S because I think, well, that has 10 gig ports, this doesn't. But then who is this even for then? And to me, this is like the almost perfect little tiny low power travel system. I mean, we're not even talking like suitcase, right? Like I can literally just, you know, throw it in my pocket here and uh, you know, no problem. I can go take it and I can throw it over here in my coffee cup. You won't even see it. I mean, this is like the perfect little system to go bring around and you can also power it using power delivery, which means you can even use things like the little battery operated, your little like batteries and you can go run it on that. We tried that earlier. I think that that is a, awesome combination for a system like this. But this is missing one critical feature and I think that is my last key lesson learned. This unit has 10 gigabits per second of networking in four two and a half gig ethernet ports. But what it does not have is Wi-Fi. I wish that this thing had Wi-Fi 6E or something like that, or even just Wi-Fi 6, just something to be able to get this onto a Wi-Fi network. The ability to have a small system like this that you can just, you know, put down and start using, I think is really nice. And I wish that that was like a thing. But overall, if you can't tell, I am super jazzed on this thing just because it's so small, it's so cool. A lot of folks are gonna say in the comments, oh, I need this or I wish it had that or whatever. But for what this is, I think this is super cool. Or I guess this is iCool Core. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the iCool Core R1. If you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.